Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. The Republic of Indonesia is home to 238 million people living on thousands of islands between Asia and Australia. 87% of the inhabitants are Muslim, making it the most heavily populated Muslim nation in the world. Over the past 18 months, Pastor Benny Hinn has held three major events in Indonesia, ministering to two million in total attendance and capturing the attention of the entire nation, including government leaders and secular media. Today, you'll experience Pastor Benny's most recent services in Papua, Indonesia, and rejoice at the significant impact made in this nation which so desperately needs the saving, healing, and life-changing power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The invitation for the Papua services originally came from the governor of the area, and a committee of political officials along with more than 4,000 pastors planned the event, which was held on an Air Force base and broadcast live throughout the nation and over a wide area of Asia and Oceania by a government-owned television network. Thousands of volunteers and hundreds of policemen were on hand to guide the crowd, which was expected to number about 500,000. But it was obvious early on the first day that this estimate was far too low. Reports came in that activity throughout the region virtually stopped as seemingly everyone was making their way to the service. By the time Pastor Benny took the stage, the official attendance count was nearly 650,000. And the next day for the second service, the total was estimated at 1 million. The huge crowds, remarkable healing testimonies, and packed altar calls for salvation marked an event described by the local media as the largest gathering in Indonesia history. God, Tuhan, lowered himself, merendahkan dirinya, and became a man. Dan menjadi manusia. He so loves us. Dia begitu mengasihi kita that he left his throne dan dia meninggalkan tahtanya disrobed his godly form dan kemudian mencopot bentuk keilahiannya and became a baby mengosongkan dirinya dan menjadi seorang bayi to experience humanity in full untuk mengalami kemanusiaan secara penuh to experience growth in full untuk mengalami pertumbuhan dengan sepenuhnya you see my brother my sister god almighty did not know what it was like to be a human being till he became a human being saudara-saudaraku tuhan tidak mengerti tentang kemanusiaan sampai dia menjadi manusia itu sendiri he did not know what it was like to be helpless till he became a baby dia tidak tahu artinya tidak berdaya sampai dia menjadi seorang bayi and as as he grew up dan ketika dia bertumbuh, he, he began to experience everything we experience. Dia mulai mengalami apa yang kita sendiri alami. The Bible says he was tempted in all points. Kita berkata dia juga dicobai di dalam segala hal. God Almighty, Tuhan yang luar biasa, was never tempted as God. Tidak pernah dicobai sebagai Tuhan. Until he became a man. Sampai dia menjadi manusia. God did not know what it was like to be tempted. Tuhan tidak tahu bagaimana rasanya dicobai. Till he became a man. Sampai dia menjadi seorang manusia. He, he did not know what it was like to be lonely. Dia tidak tahu rasanya apa itu kesepian. He didn't know what it was like to feel pain. Dia tidak tahu rasanya untuk merasakan sakit. He did not know what it was like to be forsaken. Dia tidak pernah merasakan ditinggalkan. He began to experience us completely. Dia mulai mengalami kemanusiaan itu secara lengkap. That's what the Bible means by the word was made flesh. Itulah artinya yang Alkitab katakan firman itu menjadi manusia. The son of almighty God. Anak Allah yang penuh kuasa. Came to this earth. Datang ke atas muka bumi ini. Lived a perfect life. Menghidupi kehidupan yang sempurna. 
and to show his mighty power untuk menunjukkan kuasanya yang hebat to declare who he is untuk menyatakan siapakah dia sesungguhnya he healed the sick dia menyembuhkan yang sakit he raised the dead dia membangkitkan yang mati he cleansed lepers dia menyembuhkan orang sakit kusta and he said to the jewish people dan dia berkata kepada orang yahudi if you do not believe what i say jika engkau tidak percaya apa yang aku katakan if you don't believe who i am jika engkau tidak percaya siapakah aku believe for the work's sake percayalah akan pekerjaan yang sudah dilakukan let the wonders and let the signs and let the miracles declare who i am biarlah tanda ajaib itu biarlah mukjizat itu menyatakan siapakah aku sesungguhnya when the pharisees asked that blind man how did you how did you become whole uh, how is it that 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 now you see Ketika orang Farisi mulai bertanya kepada orang buta itu, uh, mengapa sekarang engkau, bagaimana caranya engkau bisa melihat sekarang? He said a man named Jesus. Dia berkata ada seorang yang bernama Yesus. Place mud on my eyes. Uh, menaruh sesuatu di dalam mataku. And told me to go wash in the pool of Siloam. Dan menyuruh aku pergi ke kolam Siloam. And now I can see. Dan sekarang aku bisa melihat. And they kept questioning him. Dan mereka terus bertanya kepadanya. Tell us again. Oh, beritahu kami sekali lagi. What happened to you again? Apa yang terjadi kepadamu sekali lagi? And he kept telling him what happened. Dan dia terus beritahu apa yang telah terjadi. And finally they said we don't know this man. Dan mereka berkata, oh kami akhirnya kami tidak tahu siapa kau ini. And, and wisdom came out of his lips when he said. Dan ada hikmat yang keluar dari bibirnya ketika dia berkata-kata. He said from the creation of man it had not been known. That a man can open the eyes of the blind, and how is it possible that you would not know who he is? Dan kemudian dia berkata sejak Tuhan menciptakan tidak pernah terjadi ada seorang buta yang bisa melihat. Mengapakah engkau tidak bisa mengenal siapakah dia sebenarnya? What other man had ever opened the eyes of the blind? Oh, siapakah manusia yang pernah membuka mata orang buta? What other man had raised the dead? Siapakah orang manusia lain yang sanggup membangkitkan orang mati? What other man had healed the multitudes? Apakah ada orang lain yang bisa menyembuhkan orang begitu banyak? The Bible declares and virtue went out of him and healed them all. Alkitab menyatakan bahwa ada kuasa yang keluar dari dirinya dan menyembuhkan semua orang. What man had done that? Siapakah manusia yang bisa melakukan hal itu? Abraham did not do that. Abraham enggak bisa lakukan itu. Isaac did not do that. Isaac pun enggak bisa lakukan itu. Jacob did not do that. Yakub tidak melakukannya. Not even Elijah could do that. Bahkan Nabi Elia pun tidak bisa melakukannya. None of the great prophets could heal the sick like that. Tidak ada seorang nabi pun yang bisa menyembuhkan orang There sakit seperti itu. There is not itu. one scripture. There isn't one place that says that virtue went out of Elijah and healed them all. Tidak ada satu ayat pun tercatat di dalam Alkitab bahkan kepada diri yeah, Elia ada kuasa yang keluar menyembuhkan orang lain tidak ada no bible verse even says anywhere tidak ada ayat apapun dalam Alkitab yang menyatakannya di manapun that virtue went out of Moses ada kuasa yang keluar dari tubuh Musa or virtue went out of Elijah atau kuasa keluar dari tubuh Eli or virtue Elia. went out of Elisha atau kuasa keluar dari Elisa or virtue went out of, uh, of Isaiah or Jeremiah oh, atau kuasa keluar dari Yesaya atau Yeremia the greatest prophet that ever lived anu nabi yang paling hebat yang pernah hidup not one of them tidak ada seorang pun di antara mereka multitude. yang bisa menyembuhkan semua orang yang begitu banyak. Only one man healed the multitude. Satu manusia yang menyembuhkan orang yang begitu banyak. His name is not Abraham. Namanya bukan Abraham. His name is not Isaac. Namanya bukan Ishak. His name is not Jacob. Namanya bukan Yakub. His name is not Elijah. Namanya bukan Elia. His name is not Isaiah. Namanya bukan Yesaya. His name is Jesus. 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 You were deaf. Bapak tidak bisa mendengar tuli. Ya. Yeah. You could yeah. not hear. Sekarang bapak bisa mendengar. Huh? Mendengar. Ya. Mendengar. How How long were you deaf? Berapa lama sudah tidak mendengar? One year. One year. 
both ears. Dua-duanya. Ke- ya, kedua-duanya enggak bisa mendengar. This ear. Ha, huh, come, come, come. Mari maju. Stand this way. Berdiri di depan yeah. sini. Put your finger right here. Ditutup telinganya. Ya, yeah. No, no, just, just. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Bisa dengar saya sekarang? Dengar. Ya. Dengar sekarang. Repeat after me. Ulangi setelah saya. Apa kata saya? Hello. 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 Here. Shut my mic. Hello. 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 Come on, my big God bless you. Was blind. You tell me what she said. Seven years ago, she cannot see. Tujuh tahun yang lalu dia tidak bisa. For seven years. Seven years. She, she has died. not been able to see. Yes. Can you see now? Sekarang ibu bisa melihat. Yes. Okay. How many fingers? Berapa? Lima. Five. Mike, put the mic. Can you can you touch my nose? Can you touch my nose? Come. Touch my nose. <laughs> come here, come on. Touch my nose. <laughs> she did it. Give her a big God bless you. Come on. This man had a stroke, Pastor. He came in crawling. He's walking. Freely. Wait, wait. He came crawling. He came crawling into the arena tonight. He's Bapak, walking. Bapak ini datang ke lapangan ini dengan merangkak karena tidak bisa berjalan. Sekarang bisa berjalan lagi. Tidak perlu merangkak lagi. Come on, brother. Come on back. Come on back. The man. The man Bapak came crawling. Datang dengan merangkak. Now he is running. Sekarang dia bisa berlari. Keep running, keep running. Look at that. Tell me, tell me what she said. Uh, saudara-saudara, ibu ini datang dengan luka-luka semuanya di kakinya. Sekarang lukanya sudah hilang. Yeah. Tell me in English now. Uh, now. <laughs> Okay, all the pain, all the ulcers in the feet are gone. Now you can see it. Go, 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 mama, mama, go, go. Five months ago, this young lady was hit by a motorcycle. She came in on a wheelchair. She couldn't walk. She's walking now. Ibu ini lima bulan yang lalu kecelakaan sepeda motor datang dengan kursi roda tidak bisa berjalan. Sekarang dia berjalan. It's a cast on her, on her leg. Uh, jadi itu ada gips okay. yang besar. Come, 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 quick, 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 gentlemen. Wait, 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 don't, don't pick, pick it up. I didn't ask you. Wait, 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 darling. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. No pain. Tidak sakit lagi. Huh? Watch, watch. No pain. Tidak sakit. No pain. Tidak sakit. No pain, huh? Hallelujah. 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 Sakitnya, the pain is sakitnya gone. sudah tidak ada lagi. Watch this, watch this. Sudah lihat. Watch this. Okay. No pain, huh? Tidak sakit ya, Bu. No, ya. no, no pain. No pain. Tidak sakit. No pain. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, people. On the second night of this great event in Papua, Indonesia, more than one million were in attendance in the world's most heavily populated Muslim nation. Pastor Benny's message and the miracles which followed once again demonstrated that lives are changed in the presence of Jesus. Bible declares in Matthew chapter 15. Alkitab menyatakan di dalam Matius pasal yang ke-15. And verse 29. Di ayat yang ke-29. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee and went up a mountain. Dan Tuhan meninggalkan tempat itu dan Galilea dan mulai naik ke atas sebuah bukit and sat down. Dan duduk di sana. 
And the Bible says, Dan Alkitab berkata, And great multitudes came unto him. Dan begitu banyak orang berbondong-bondong datang kepadanya. It's one of the very few times in the Bible where Jesus is sitting on a mountain and the people having come, having having to find him and come up that mountain. Saudara berulang-ulang saudara baca di dalam Alkitab begitu banyak orang berbondong-bondong datang mendekati Yesus di atas bukit itu. Having with them those that were lame dan membawa orang-orang bersama dengan dia yang lumpuh, Blind. yang buta, dumb and maimed, yang tuli dan bisu, and many others dan masih banyak lagi yang lain. And they cast them down at his feet. Dan mereka semua tersungkur di bawah kakinya. Can you see that blind man coming up the hill? Bisakah saudara melihat orang buta itu mendaki ke bukit? Somebody helping him up. Ada seseorang yang membantunya untuk naik. Can you see that somebody who cannot walk? Bisakah saudara melihat orang yang tidak bisa berjalan? Holding on to some friend climbing up the mountain. Oh, sedang bertumpu kepada temannya supaya bisa mendaki ke atas. Can you see that one maimed? Bisakah saudara melihat orang yang sakit? Carried by some friends up the mountain. Yang harus digotong oleh temannya naik ke atas bukit itu. Thousands of them came up that mountain. Beribu-ribu orang itu mulai mendaki ke bukit. And the Bible says he healed them all. Dan Alkitab berkata dia menyembuhkan mereka semuanya. In so much that the multitudes wondered when they saw the dumb to speak. Dan begitu banyak orang-orang terpesona melihat orang yang bisu mulai berbicara. The maim to be whole. Oh, yang mulai lumpuh mulai disembuhkan. The lame to walk. Yang lumpuh mulai berjalan. The blind to see. Yang buta mulai melihat. And they glorified the God of Israel. Dan mereka mulai memuji mempermuliakan Allah Israel. There was the Son of Almighty God sitting on that rock. Oh, di situlah anak Allah yang luar biasa duduk di atas sebuah batu. And there came the thousands who were sick and in need of a miracle. Oh, dan beribu-ribu orang yang membutuhkan mujizat dan yang sakit. And Jesus healed every one of them. Dan Yesus menyembuhkan setiap daripada mereka. I'm here to tell the people of Papua. Saya ada di sini untuk memberitahu rakyat Papua. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Dia tetap sama dahulu, sekarang, dan sampai selama lamanya. He healed them all 2,000 years ago, and he will heal them all today. Dia menyembuhkan semuanya 2,000 tahun yang lalu. Dia akan menyembuhkan semuanya juga saat ini. Let's believe tonight. Marilah kita percaya malam hari ini. That everyone who's come to the service here. Bahwa setiap orang yang datang di kebaktian malam hari ini Will be healed Akan disembuhkan Will be healed Akan disembuhkan Will be healed Akan disembuhkan You see my brother, you see my sister Saudara lihat saudaraku laki-laki dan saudaraku perempuan All you and I need to do Semua yang saudara dan saya perlu lakukan is come into his presence adalah mendatangi dalam hadiratnya in his presence di dalam hadiratnya sickness die sakit penyakit mati in his presence di dalam hadiratnya cancer dies kanker mati in his presence di dalam hadiratnya every disease dies setiap sakit penyakit mati because in the presence of the Lord there is liberty. Sebab di dalam hadirat Tuhan ada kemerdekaan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Liberty from disease. Kemerdekaan dari sakit penyakit. Liberty from sickness. Kemerdekaan dari penyakit. Liberty from bondage. Kemerdekaan dari ikatan. He said I will bless your bread. Dia berkata aku akan memberkati rotimu and I will bless your water dan aku akan memberkati airmu and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee dan aku akan menjauhkan sakit penyakit daripada engkau my brother my sister it is impossible to be sick if you live in the presence of the lord saudaraku laki-laki dan perempuan adalah mustahil kalau engkau sakit kalau engkau hidup dalam hadirat Tuhan 
The Bible says when the sick came into his presence. Alkitab berkata ketika sakit penyakit datang dalam hadiratnya. When they cast them at his feet. Ketika mereka tersungkur di bawah kakinya. He healed every one of them. Dia menyembuhkan setiap daripada mereka. When Jesus walked into the villages of Galilee. Ketika Yesus datang ke kampung Galilea. The Bible declares in Matthew chapter 4. Alkitab menyatakan dalam Matius pasal yang keempat. And verse 23. Ayat yang ke-23. The Bible tells me something marvelous. Oh, Alkitab menceritakan kepada saya sesuatu yang And ajaib. Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Dan Yesus berkeliling dari satu tempat kepada tempat dalam rumah ibadat dan mengabarkan Injil and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Dan menyembuhkan setiap orang yang sakit. He walked into a village. Dia mendatangi sebuah desa. And when he came out, dan ketika dia keluar, all of them were healed. Semuanya disembuhkan. When Jesus comes, ketika Yesus datang, sickness goes. Sakit penyakit pergi. When Jesus comes, ketika Yesus datang, demons run. Iblis lari. When Jesus comes, ketika Yesus datang, he brings health. Dia mendatangkan kesehatan. He brings healing. Dia membawa kesembuhan. Today, tonight. Hari ini malam hari ini in Papua di Papua Jesus is going to come right to where you are Jesus akan mendatangi saudara di manapun saudara berada and he will touch you dan dia akan mencamah saudara and he will heal you dan dia akan menyembuhkan saudara you are not leaving the same person you came saudara tidak akan sama seperti saudara datang you're leaving your sickness behind saudara akan meninggalkan sakit penyakitmu hallelujah hallelujah I'm starting 2015 with seven days of prayer in my home for you. You know, every year I do this. Now, you know, I pray all the time. I'm praying every day. Trust me. Every day I'm spending time with the Lord. But I want to take seven days in the beginning of 2015, just full days, to seek, to seek the Lord for my life and his plan for my future, and especially 2015. And I want you to send me your prayer request because I want your prayer request in my home. I don't want to pray over it in, my, in, in the office or somewhere else. I want it in my prayer room, in my house for seven days where I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to lay my hands, I'm going to get on my knees and lay my hands on your prayer request. Believe in God to meet every need in your life. I don't care what it is. Post Office Box 16000 Irving, Texas. Please send me that prayer request. Make sure I get it before the end of the year because I'm going to start January 1. God is looking for somebody in the body of Christ who he can raise up to be money missionaries. Romans 10 said it like this, how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall he preach except he be sent? 
I want you to know today that God wants to anoint your pocketbook. He wants to anoint your wallet. He wants to anoint your bank account so that you can speak and send preachers all over the world so that the gospel can be preached. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world and then shall the end come. We know Pastor Benny, he ministers all over the world. People's lives are changed. My life was changed from one service and I'm no longer the same because I came in contact with an anointing. But somebody sowed a seed and them sowing that seed caused my life to be changed. And because my life was changed, their life was changed. You don't know whose life you change when you sow a seed into this ministry. I'm talking to 50 money missionaries. That's your assignment. Somebody said, Lord, what did you call me to do? I called you to be a money missionary. I called you. You can't go. You have a family. You have things you have to do. You're not able to travel all over the world. You can't go to Zimbabwe. You can't go to Australia. You can't go to India. You can't go to Egypt. But you can go through your finances. How shall they preach except they be sent? You're a money missionary. That's your calling. And I'm talking to 50 money missionaries. The Holy Ghost is challenging you right now to sow a seed of $1,000. You sow this seed. The Spirit of God is getting ready to send a supernatural release in your life. Are you ready? I'm going to pray. As soon as I get done praying, run to that phone. And so there's a Father in the name of Jesus. I give you praise for the release. You gave me that visitation and told me whatever I speak, you'll back it up. I'm speaking to 50 people. Cause their finances to be drastically changed. And that person who needs a miracle, give it to them now. I thank you for that anointing for finance being released now. In Jesus' name, amen. If I was you, I would dial that number right now. Don't hesitate. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Hear God. Your life is changing. You'll never be the same. This seed is changing your life. You ain't seen nothing yet. God bless. Pastor Benny invites you to join over 2 million Facebook users around the world who like Benny Hinn Ministries. Go to the ministry website and click the Facebook link. And while you're there, be sure to start following him on Twitter. He personally sends regular ministry updates and inspiring messages. So connect with Pastor Benny today. Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. The Republic of Indonesia is home to 238 million people living on thousands of islands between Asia and Australia. 87% of the inhabitants are Muslim, making it the most heavily populated Muslim nation in the world. Over the past 18 months, Pastor Benny Hinn has held three major events in Indonesia, ministering to two million in total attendance and capturing the attention of the entire nation, including government leaders and secular media. Today, you'll experience Pastor Benny's most recent services in Papua, Indonesia, and rejoice at the significant impact made in this nation which so desperately needs the saving, healing, and life-changing power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The invitation for the Papua services originally came from the governor of the area, and a committee of political officials along with more than 4,000 pastors planned the event, which was held on an Air Force base and broadcast live throughout the nation and over a wide area of Asia and Oceania by a government-owned television network. Thousands of volunteers and hundreds of policemen were on hand to guide the crowd, which was expected to number about 500,000. But it was obvious early on the first day that this estimate was far too low. Reports came in that activity throughout the region virtually stopped as seemingly everyone was making their way to the service.
By the time Pastor Benny took the stage, the official attendance count was nearly 650,000. And the next day for the second service, the total was estimated at 1 million. The huge crowds, remarkable healing testimonies, and packed altar calls for salvation marked an event described by the local media as the largest gathering in Indonesia history. God, Tuhan, lowered himself, merendahkan dirinya, and became a man. Dan menjadi manusia. He so loves us, dia begitu mengasihi kita, that he left his throne, dan dia meninggalkan tahtanya disrobed his godly form dan kemudian mencopot bentuk keilahiannya and became a baby mengosongkan dirinya dan menjadi seorang bayi to experience humanity in full untuk mengalami kemanusiaan secara penuh to experience growth in full untuk mengalami pertumbuhan dengan sepenuhnya you see my brother my sister god almighty did not know what it was like to be a human being till he became a human being saudara-saudaraku tuhan tidak mengerti tentang kemanusiaan sampai dia menjadi manusia itu sendiri he did not know what it was like to be helpless till he became a baby dia tidak tahu artinya tidak berdaya sampai dia menjadi seorang bayi and as as he grew up dan ketika dia bertumbuh, he, he began to experience everything we experience. Dia mulai mengalami apa yang kita sendiri alami. The Bible says he was tempted in all points. Alkitab berkata dia juga dicobai di dalam segala hal. God Almighty, Tuhan yang luar biasa, was never tempted as God. Tidak pernah dicobai sebagai Tuhan. Until he became a man. Sampai dia menjadi manusia. God did not know what it was like to be tempted. Tuhan tidak tahu bagaimana rasanya dicobai. Till he became a man. Sampai dia menjadi seorang manusia. He, he did not know what it was like to be lonely. Dia tidak tahu rasanya apa itu kesepian. He didn't know what it was like to feel pain. Dia tidak tahu rasanya untuk merasakan sakit. He did not know what it was like to be forsaken. Dia tidak pernah merasakan ditinggalkan. He began to experience us completely. Dia mulai mengalami kemanusiaan itu secara lengkap. That's what the Bible means by the word was made flesh. Itulah artinya yang Alkitab katakan firman itu menjadi manusia. The Son of Almighty God, Anak Allah yang penuh kuasa, came to this earth, datang ke atas muka bumi ini, lived a perfect 